We have a new region that's rotating into Earth view off of the sun's east limb, and it's already been firing a couple solar storms, so we're watching it. And we have the remnant of a coronal hole that may bring us a little bit of fast wind in through the end of the weekend. Those stories and more in the news this week. The space weather this week is calming down just a little bit compared to last week when we had that brief solar storm that brought gorgeous aurora views to Canada and up in Tasmania, even though it didn't last very long. But this week, the story is region 2664 that's rotating into the Earth view off of the sun's east limb. It's a new region, so it's kind of unstable, and it's been firing off some solar storms. It's not yet an M-flare producer, but we are watching it. Meanwhile, we have this filament that it seems reasonably stable, but it's now rotated into the Earth strike zone, and we're watching it to see whether or not it's going to launch as a solar storm. On top of that, we have this coronal hole that's kind of a remnant coronal hole. You've got a good, uh, well-formed region up here in the north that's nice and dark, but this wispier region down here, this is the area that would bring us some fast wind when it rotates into the Earth strike zone oh, about the end of the week. So it could give us maybe just a little bit of sporadic fast wind, which, for you amateur radio operators, might interfere with field day. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see the X-ray flux is still incredibly low, which means the solar flux overall is really low. You amateur radio operators are still having problems with propagation, I know. We are popping a little few B-class flares here and there, but we haven't even reached the seafloor. The nice thing is that there's no chance for an M-flare radio blackout anytime soon, and this trend will continue into the foreseeable future. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see back on the 16th, we did get that solar storm from some fast wind, but it really wasn't sustained. It hit storm levels twice, just enough to give us a boost in Canada. They had some gorgeous views, even down into the upper tier of the United States. And then again, we got another boost just in time for Tasmania to get a beautiful view. But outside of that, it petered off pretty quickly. That meant we didn't get any views in Europe uh, or, or even in northern UK at all. And then uh, since then, things have kind of just quieted down and quieted down, and it should continue this trend uh, over the next few days at least. And even though the solar storm from last week didn't last all that long, it had some real intensifications, which gave us some gorgeous aurora views, especially in Canada, like this from Lake Huron in Ontario, and gorgeous aurora over Yellowknife. We had beautiful views north of Winnipeg in Manitoba, and over Andrew, Alberta, and over Alex, Alberta, there was gorgeous aurora over Alex. And in Holman, Wisconsin, it even dipped to the USA. And down under, there were gorgeous shots in Hobart, Tasmania. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And when you look at the backside of the disk, there's not a lot going on, but there are two bright regions. The westmost bright region, that is region 2664, and it's beginning to rotate into the Earth view now. But if you notice, it's been firing off solar storms even on the backside. This is why we are watching it so closely. If it continues to be active as it rotates in through the Earth strike zone, it could actually launch a solar storm that it would be Earth directed. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we aren't anticipating much this week. We do have a chance of a little bit of fast wind that'll be kind of sporadic that might hit us over the weekend. So at high latitudes, NOAA's expecting uh, active conditions with about a 20% chance of minor storm. At mid latitudes, we're really only expecting unsettled conditions with only about a 20% chance of active conditions. And that's probably over Friday, Saturday, maybe even into Sunday. But it's really hard to tell because we're not anticipating anything to be too strong. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we are watching that new region 2664 rotating onto the east limb of the sun, and it is firing off some solar storms, but we don't expect it to be an M-flare player anytime soon, so everything is still in the green when it comes to flares. Now regarding that solar flux, it looks like we're going to be hanging on to marginal levels for you amateur radio operators. This is good news, region 2664 is helping keep that solar flux up, so look Looks like things are a go for field day, when I'm sure all of you will be loving that. Now, regarding uh, solar radiation, we're not anticipating anything there either. So both you amateur radio operators and you GPS operators, it looks like it's going to be a pretty good week. 
So the space weather this week looks to be calming down compared to last week. We don't have any strong storms on the horizon. So you Aurora photographers, unless you're at high latitudes, you can probably put your cameras down and take a nice little breather. When you amateur radio operators, it also doesn't look like there's all that much on the sun's agenda this week. So you might have a very nice field day weekend. And you GPS operators, everything also is in the clear. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.